Hey family, y'all are about to receive a powerful word as we conclude this series of teaching on rebuilding our wall of protection. I want everybody to understand as we go into this word today that there is yet a work to be done. The enemy is relentless. He will not stop. He is as a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. He's coming at you over and over and over again. And although he may be relentless, you must, need, you must know that your God is relentless, that your anointing is relentless, that your power is relentless. Let's get ready to go into this word. It's going to bless you. Let's look at Nehemiah, the sixth chapter in the first verse. This is the rebuilding of the walls. The Bible says, now it came to pass when Sambalat and Tobiah. Now, is it just me or do these same jokers keep popping up? Like every week I, I hear something about Sambalat and Tobiah, just over and over. And Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there were no breaches left therein, though at the time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sambalat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of oh no but they thought to do me mischief and I sent messengers unto them saying I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you Yet they sent unto me four times after that short, and I answered them after the same manner. They just kept coming, and uh, over and over, they wouldn't stop. They were relentless. Just kept coming at me. And if you keep reading, I'm going to jump down to verse 15, but if you keep reading, they was using all types of ploys and and. Uh, in verse 2 and verse 3, and, I mean, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, they just kept coming over and over. Uh, I think later on in this chapter, they even used church folk. They got a priest to say, come meet us at the temple. Of course, we're going to be protected in the church. You can't even trust church folk. They're plotting against you. Now, verse 15, though, says... So the wall was finished in the 20th and 5th day of the month, Elul. Look at this. In 50 and 2 days, what y'all said couldn't done, couldn't get done, we did it in less than 2 months. What y'all was joking and said Fox would knock it down, we we built in 52 days. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof and all the heathens that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes where they perceived that the work was done by our God. As we conclude this teaching today, these last three messages dealt with the fact that while building, you still have to fight. You still have to be prepared to fight. You got to be at the ready. And uh, when we looked at this two messages ago, we talked about overcoming conspiracies and plots. And I asked you the rhetorical question, how do you plan for something that you don't know is even coming? By definition, a plot is something that's done in secret or conspiracies when people, more than one person is doing it. We talked about the three strategies on coming out of ignorance, of knowing that your enemy is plotting against you. And then last week, we talked about the weapons of our warfare, the defensive weapons, the offensive weapons, and the weapons of special forces powerful word 
Today, I want to close out with the war plan part three. And specifically, I want to deal with the relentless nature of the devil. Relentless is defined as, look at this, oppressively constant, incessant. A relentless person is someone who's determined to do something and refuses to give up, even if what they are doing is cruel. It just won't stop. It's relentless. Um, as you have been following along with me in this study, you notice that the same guy, Sembalat and Tobiah, they just kept popping up. Every step of the way, they kept trying to hinder the work. Over and over, some nine times we read in Scripture, this plot, that plot, this conspiracy, this thing. And, and, and let, me, let me be real clear. When you are dealing with a relentless devil, it can be awfully disheartening, and discouraging. find it amazing how you can get on the bad side of a person many times for a reason that you don't even know and they won't stop. They'll just keep coming for you. When you think you've gotten over it, gotten it done, talked it out, here they come with something else. It's relentless. And, and I, I, I want you all to get this because a lot of you all, become very disheartened and discouraged when the enemy keeps coming back at you over and over and over again. And you would think, now this just don't make no sense. And here's the weird thing about it. The weird thing about it is God does not only allow it to happen, sometimes I think God be encouraging it to happen. Can I mess with y'all for just a few minutes today? God says to Moses, <laughs> I want, after 40 years in the desert, I want you to go to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Now, I know how most of y'all think. If God called me on assignment, he going to make my pathway straight. He going to make it easy. If God called me to do something, uh, he going to open up doors. I'm going to have all miracles, miracle signs and wonders. Look at God. Look at God. God is blessing and blessing and blessing and blessing. Uh, it's my season for a miracle. It's my time because God has called me. We've been through 70 years uh, and it's my season and it's my time and going into my better season and my better time and so God says Moses they suffered long enough go down there and tell Pharaoh to let my people go and I find it interesting Moses got his rod he said boy I got a good rod this rod turned into snakes and he got the power of God in one hand the word of God on the other and I'm getting ready to go get my people and while Moses is on his way God doubles back goes to Pharaoh and say when Moses show up don't let him go the Bible says that God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. What in the world? You going to tell me to do something and then tell the enemy not to cooperate? Uh, I, know, I know that bothers a lot of y'all. You be trying to do the right thing. I'm going to turn the other cheek. And them chokers don't get any better, no matter how many cheeks you offer them. As a matter of fact, when you do the right thing, I know y'all think that it's going to turn around. I'm going and do that Jesus thing that Pastor was preaching about on Sunday. I'm going back to this job, and I'm just going to trust God and believe God, and they're going to start acting right. I know that's how y'all feel that it's supposed to work. Oh, preach right here. But the Bible says, uh, avenge not yourselves, uh, hallelujah, and, and tells us to do good, to be able to do evil to us. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. And you think that when I do good to my enemies, that it's going to make them change their mind. No! It makes them mad. How dare you act nice to me when I'm trying to be evil to you? And the Bible says it heaps hot coals on their head. They get mad at you for being nice to them. How dare you be nice to me? Prophetess Floyd, she's preached here a few years ago. 
used to tell this story. She's also a, a, a defense lawyer of a guy she was defending who was a uh, um, uh, former mobster that was turning state's evidence against the mob. And the mob sent word to him that they was coming to get him, that they had a hit out on him. And uh, he never batted an eye. He never changed his disposition. He never changed where he lived. He didn't get scared. He didn't get afraid. And they said, did you hear us? We said that the mob got a hit on. They're coming for you. And he didn't do anything. He just kept on living his life. He said, killers are coming for you. And he said, they said aren't you afraid? He said, no. He said, why not? Because I'm a killer too. I'm not afraid of killers. I know how to kill. In other words, <laughs> what God wants you to know today, that the enemy may be, be relentless and won't give up. You got to look that double straight in the eye and say, I'm relentless too. You ain't going to stop. I ain't going to stop. You ain't going to stop attacking me. I ain't going to stop praising God. Uh, you ain't going to stop coming for me. I ain't going to stop messing with you. You ain't going to stop messing with my money. I ain't going to stop praising God. Uh, you ain't going to stop coming for my children. I ain't going to stop coming for your throat because I'm a killer too. I'm relentless too. I'm persistent. I'm constant. You knock me down. I have the audacity to keep getting back up over and over and over again. I have the audacity when you think you done took me out. You go to church on Sunday. I beat you there right back in church. Why you didn't kick me in the throat, knock me out, kill my dog, lost my car. I walk to church if I have to. I'm a killer too. Yeah, I want to stop this word, uh, finish this word by saying the war plan part three. Look at three people and say relentless, relentless, relentless. Uh, the devil is relentless. I'm relentless too. Relentless. Let's talk about the relentless enemy, the relentless work, and the relentless victory. Everybody say the enemy. The Bible says, Symbolic and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ona. But they thought to do mischief in verse 4, and they sent to me four times. He just kept doing it. Earlier in this series, we made an observation that when God calls us to do a thing, not only does he not remove our enemies and adversaries, but he actually stirs them up. He actually makes it more difficult. And see, some people got it twisted. They think that when God's on your side that everything works out. Uh, it does work out, but it may not work out the way you think. And we know that all things work together for good. Look at your neighbor and say, for good. Now look at him again and say, but not necessarily your good. Y'all didn't like that, did you? He said it always works out for good. But some of that for good, you ain't going to like it too good. Okay, I'm using all bad, kind of bad English, ain't I? Uh, uh, you ain't going to like it. It's for good, but not necessarily will it feel good to you. In Luke 4, the Bible says Jesus warred in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And you would think that that was a battle enough just to go 40 days and 40 nights in consecration of prayer. But many times when y'all get really close with God, that's just a warm-up for your real fight. And, and, and so after the 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, that's when the devil came for him. The devil came for him. The devil came for him and came for him on all points. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. He came for his flesh and he came for his eyes and he came for his pride. And Jesus defeated him on all points, which is the why the Bible says we have not a, a, a savior who is not familiar with us because he was tempted on all points but never sinned. So he's familiar with what we're going through, but he defeated the devil on all points. By by the time we get to verse 13, then the Bible says, and when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him for a 
season. Now, what is interesting is you all tend to focus on the wrong part of that verse. Most of us focus on the word ended. Like, so you feel like, okay, when am I going to get to my end? When is all this drama going to stop? And so I finally got to my end. Now my good time is coming. Good times, these are the... And so now you, 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 you're saying, okay, my, now my good times are coming. And, and we're going to have a great time. And, and we're going to go and just, just... It's just all chicken and gravy now. It's chicken and waffles now. And it's just going to be heaven on earth now. And we're just going to have a great time. Good times, these are the good times. And, and, and so, because why? Because the devil has ended. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's the wrong word to focus on. Uh, the real word to focus on is season. Boy, come here. I'm coming for y'all now. Everybody say season. Uh, see, I need you to understand your devil never gives up because he is relentless. Uh, you may beat him for a season, but understand in your life, every season always ends with a cliffhanger. Preach, 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 preach. And if it ends with a cliffhanger, it tells you that there is another season coming. Uh, there's another season coming. Uh, and even if whether the cliffhanger is a who shot JR or a cliffhanger is uh, we felt like we was going to live happily ever after. It is always a cliffhanger to let you know that there is more coming. Look at somebody and say there's more coming. Uh, even if you defeat the devil in this season, uh, uh, it's just a cliffhanger for the next season in which he will come back again. Uh, and so a lot of us get frustrated and discombobulated uh, because uh, hallelujah, we don't look at life as a season. Uh, life comes and goes and ebbs and flows in seasons. Uh, and so does uh, the devil. Uh, he comes over and over and over again. Uh, our victory that we achieve sometimes uh, is just just a cliffhanger. Uh, see, sometimes you think you have defeated the devil. Uh, that is just a cliffhanger for him to regroup uh, and come back. This season, he had on a blue suit. Next season, he's going to have on a red dress, uh, but it's going to be the same devil. Uh, you're going to know it because he's going to have an Adam apple. And he said, I know you got on the dress, but I... Uh, I lost some of y'all on that, but we're going to talk about that next Wednesday. Stop, Pastor Will. Ah, you had on the red dress, but you come with a blue suit, but it's the same devil. Y'all ain't working with a brother right here. Huh? It's just, somebody say the same devil. Huh? He's, he's in dressed up and picked himself up and put some heels on, but it's the same devil. Huh? New season, but same devil. Huh? New level, huh? but same devil. Huh? And so he comes over and over and over again. The Bible described him as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And I need you to appreciate what that means. A lion will lay up all day long and go out and get him some dinner, chew up, kill up somebody. And then the next day, he's just laying all comfortable. But you just best believe by the time the sun go down, he's coming back again. He's coming back again. And so although you may have gotten away last night, boy, preach right there. Although you may escape last night, it's the same devil waiting on you tonight. And so we got to stop saying, Pastor, this is too much. I just can't take this. It's too much. The devil keeps coming at me. And so many of us have given up on life because of the relentless nature of the enemy who comes over and over and over again. The only way for the devil to stop coming at you is for you to be dead. Okay, I'm stopping. I'm preaching. The only way for the devil to come at you is for you to already be dead because he like fresh meat. I'm preaching right here. Scavengers eat dead meat, but the devil goes after something that still got blood in it. Something that still got some life in it. Something that still is breathing. He's not a scavenger he wants something that's alive and as long as you're alive he's coming, he's coming, he's coming and so many of us have gotten frustrated because we say and this is a lie from the pit of hell I just can't 
take it no more. The reason why that's a lie is because you've already taken it multiple times. So if you've taken it before, you can take it some more. But the reason why you feel like you can't take it no more is because you allowed yourself to get on empty and to run out. And you say, I'm just burnt out. But you were never intended to burn out. Let me preach to about three people in here that ever let their car go on empty. See, when you're, when you're driving your car, there's a little light that comes on and it pops on yellow. Now, if you're like me, you say, oh, I got 50 more miles to preach right there. And so you just keep on driving. You get back in the car. Oh, that's right. I got to go get some gas. But I got now 25 more miles. And you keep on driving and you keep on driving until one day, what in the world is wrong with this car? And you look up, oh my God, I'm on complete E. I done went past E. And now I say this car can't take it no more. But God said, I've been warning some of y'all for three weeks to go to the station and fill up. But you kept your hard head tail to my, I still got 25 more miles to go. And you over there guesstimating with the devil and guesstimating with how much more I can take from this man and guesstimating on how much more I can put up with him until you own E. And now, because you're empty, you want to get rid of the car preach up in this place. Every time I turn around, this car is running out. No, every time you turn around, you don't go get it filled up and tuned up. But I love my new car now. Because see, my new car, see, some of y'all need some new cars. See, my old car, it just have a little light. Sometimes I forget about the light. But my new car, first the light comes on. But then the whole dash should take over and say, look, Ninja, you ain't got but 20 more miles to go. And then it'll go down 19 more miles to go. It don't stop. It takes over my, I clear it, it pop back up 15 more miles to go huh? some of y'all need a new car huh? you need a new spirit, huh? you need a new prayer life, huh? you need a new praise life huh? you need something that's going to tell you every day of your life huh? you need a fill up huh? stop saying what you can't take huh? and just go get it filled up because huh? if I get it filled up, look at your neighbor huh? once I get it filled up, that joker say you got 361 more miles to go, preach right there, huh? when you get a fresh word from the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, I believe I'll run on and see what the end is going to be. And so stop thinking that this stuff is so weird. The Bible says, think it not strange confirming the fiery darts of the enemy as if some strange thing has happened to you. This stuff is common. It happens to everybody. Everybody run into marital problems. Everybody run into job problems. Everybody running the kid problems and children problems and in-law problems and sibling problems. Uh, the question is not your problem or your devil or the persistency or the uh, of your devil. It is. Uh, are you on a routine uh, that you say, look, uh, I know how my car operates. Uh, so every Monday I'm going to go fill up. Uh, every Wednesday I'm going to go get my second fill up. Uh, I'm preaching right here. Uh, and therefore I never have to worry uh, about running out. Uh, Somebody say hallelujah. Because the Bible says there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common. Somebody scream, this is common. This is common. Ain't nothing weird about your life. It's common. Ain't nothing weird about your devil. That's what they do. And when they do it, believe them because they're going to do it again. When they do it, believe them because they're going to do it again. Y'all ain't working with me. When they do it, believe them because they're going to do it again. But God has already prepared a way of escape. God didn't already set up enough gas stations that somewhere along the way, all you got to do is just pull in and fill up and get right back on the road. Somebody say hallelujah. And how do we do that? The God says, submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Whom ye resist steadfast. Hallelujah with faith and knowledge. Uh, hallelujah because you ain't the only one going through this uh, somebody give God a praise uh, and look at your neighbor and say neighbor uh, the devil is relentless uh, but I'm relentless too I'm relentless too I'm relentless too so now so now so now let, let, let's now move to the work the work 
He said, I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down? <laughs> Listen, I need you to understand the ultimate purpose of the relentless enemy is to get you to stop doing the work. But the work is too great. The assignment is too important. The destiny is too consequential for us to stop. I need you to get this in your spirit. I know you may not be the pastor or the bishop or the prophet, the governor or the mayor or the president, but I need you to know that in your world, you matter. In your world, you are vital. If you break down, then something's going to break down in your world. It may be your child. It may be your grandchild that ain't here yet. It may be the person on your job or the person who ain't got to the job yet. It may be a member at your church or somebody's going to join the church six months from now. But at the end of the day, I need you to understand that if there's breath in your body, hairs on your head, then you matter. And everything that you do has consequential destiny written all over it. I need you to get this because the enemy will convince you that you don't matter, that the work that you're doing don't matter and will get you to quit and stop doing. Well, ain't nobody gonna miss me anyway. Ain't nobody gonna miss it anyway. And you don't even realize just how consequential you are. God would have never created you if you didn't matter. I'm a preaching here. Do you know how significant you are? That hundreds of thousands of sperms was running after you and only the one that God directed caught up with you. I'm preaching right here. And said I chose you. And but while your mama was winking at your daddy I had an idea on who you would be uh, and what you would look like uh, and when uh, your mama was pregnant and didn't even know she was pregnant yet uh, I ordained purpose and destiny in your life uh, Jeremiah said uh, when you was in your mother's womb uh, I knew you uh, and I destined uh, see I know you done been through hell and back uh, hallelujah you were shaped in iniquity and conceived in sin but before the devil ever showed up I was already there and when I was there uh, I was creating destiny and I was writing DNA I was giving you natural gifts and when you got saved I put spiritual giftings in you that some of you ain't even identified yet because you won't even allow yourself to get stirred up by the enemy because you keep quitting and giving up and stopping not understanding that even the devil serves a purpose in your life to stir up the gift of God which was placed in you by the laying on of hands and I ordained you a prophet you trying to say you can't do it and how can you tell me what you can't do when I'm the one to put in you the ability to do it in the first place I don't care what other people say I don't care what they think as a matter of fact look in the mirror I don't care what that person thinks either because I'm the one that called you I'm the one that ordained you I'm the one that sent you I'm the one that blessed you I'm the one that gifted at you and I want you to know that you matter whether it is today or a hundred years from now your life will matter and if you get the devil to make you come off that wall then somebody is going to miss their protection because you didn't do your job preach right here the Bible says nevertheless the foundation of God standing sure having this seal that the Lord Lord knows them that are here's somebody scream and say I belong to God I was called of God if you're here in this place you belong to God if you've accepted Christ as your Savior God knows your name he knows every hair on your body every cell in your body every hair on your head and God knew your tomorrow when it was last year and he knew everything he called you to do and cause the Bible says and whom he did foreknow them he predestined to conform to the image of his son and some of you he gave the 
gifts to be an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. There's somebody waiting on you to get back to work on your wall. There's somebody that's going to get perfected if you get to doing what I told you to do, what I called you to do, what I anointed you to do. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my work is relentless. Jesus said, I must work the work of him that sent me while it's day I gotta work y'all I can't take off I can't go home mad I can't quit some of y'all are like Jeremiah you went home to quit you got sick and tired of the relentless devil but God reminded you and you came back and they said I thought you quit but you said it's like fire it's like fire it's like fire I went home to quit I tried to quit I wanted to quit I got sick and tired of being sick and tired but it's like fire shut up in my bone I'm too important to quit the work is too significant to quit oh lord some of you saying well pastor I gotta quit cause my help then walk out the door let me preach to you all look at your neighbor and say neighbor stop lying on God cause God never walked out maybe your extra help walked out the door maybe your help mate walked out the door maybe your assistant helper walked out the door but before that help ever showed up God said I was all already there when I called you the Bible says I am your refuge and your strength a very present help in the time of trouble maybe my extra help walked out but before you walked in God was already there before you showed up offer me five dollars on the rent God had already paid the rent cause he said I'm paid in full my debt has been paid in full thank you for the two three dollars but I, 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 I will be all right keep your two dollars keep your five dollars but I'm here and I'm ready to go to work I got to work with you or without you I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me give three people a high five and say I got my help and I'm going to work I can't quit I won't quit I can't quit I gotta work whether you help me or not I gotta work whether you show up or not I gotta work whether you stop me or not I gotta work work while it's day while you're still breathing while you're still caught I, 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 I. shake somebody's hand and say neighbor the work is relentless but just keep on working keep on working my God shall supply all you need my God shall supply the joy you need the peace you need the love you need the long suffering you need yeah 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 Go to three people and tell them I can't stop working. I've got to work. I'm relentless. I will not. I cannot. I won't not. I've got to work. My grandchildren need me to work. My brothers and sisters need me to work. 
people that ain't born yet need me to work. If I don't work, I may destroy a generation. If I don't work, my grandkids may not know the Lord. If I don't work, that person at the job may lose their mind. Yeah! Yeah! Work, 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 work. The devil is relentless, but I'm relentless too. The devil is a killer, but I'm a killer too. The devil is a murderer, but I'm a murderer too. You come at me, I'm coming back. You come at my children, I'm coming for your throat. You come at my home, I'm coming for your kingdom. I'm working, I'm working. You left me for dead, but I'm a good back up. Time to work. Time to work, time to work, work! Somebody scream, somebody scream, somebody scream. Let the devil know I ain't stopping, I ain't quitting. I'm relentless, I'm relentless, I'm relentless. Relentless, relentless, consistently persistent. Work, 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 work. Don't stop, don't quit, don't give up. Everybody jump up on your feet. Everybody jump up on your feet. Say this with me. The devil is relentless. Say, but I am relentless. And say, neighbor, if I'm relentless, then my victory is guaranteed. My victory is relentless. Now, thanks be unto God, which always always gives us the victory which always causes us to triumph my victory is relentless you meant it for evil but god meant it for good relentless victory relentless triumph Bible says, I'm, I, everybody stand up, everybody stand up. The devil came at him nine times to stop the work. Nine times. Here come that joker again. Here they come again. Oh Lord, here they come again. It kept coming over and over and over. God says, but they finished the work under budget, <laughs> under schedule, they finished it in 52 days. What the devil thought would never happen. Uh, God brought it in under budget, under schedule, with days to go. What you thought couldn't happen, what you thought was impossible, God's going to show the devil, I can do it with my hands uh, tied behind my back. I 
can do it with all your hell, with all your drama. I can still be victorious. Y'all stand up. You want to know what's so remarkable about that? God did it so quickly and so phenomenally that even the devil had to second guess himself. The Bible says the devil said, oh my God. The devil said, what in the world? After all the hell I put you through? After all the drama I put you through? After all the heartbreaks, all the tears I put you through, you have the audacity, you have the audacity, you have the audacity to keep on working. You have the relentlessness. I will bless the Lord at all times. everybody in here stand on your feet I'm not confused about my journey somebody said something to me we're getting ready to pray um, four years ago my marriage got attacked the ministry got attacked I had procrastinators saying the ministry is going to fall apart you know what I did? I just started working. I kept showing up to work. Until you fire me, I'm coming to work. And until you tell me, don't come to work, I'm coming to work. And, and people would say things like, boy, I'm, I'm so inspired by the fact that you keep showing up. And I'm like, I'm saying, you know, I smile at them and all that. But I'm saying to myself, well, what else you thought I was going to do? I mean, this is the way I was raised. We, 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 we don't stop. We don't give up. We don't quit. We show up to work every day. We, we, we get disappointed. We get hearts broken. But I still come to work. Because he may be relentless, but I'm just as relentless. And if I'm relentless, what that song say? Put your time in because payday is coming after why I just have the audacity to believe that even if I don't get paid when I'm supposed to get paid I am going to get paid I am going to get paid victory will show up there is a relentless nature about God uh, that behold I come quickly and my reward is with me to what pay every man according to what his works y'all meet me at the altar real quick i'm going to close out this series meet me at the altar i'll if this word blessed you meet me at the altar come on come on come on come on hallelujah 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 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah! Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with you. Don't get it twisted about the relentless nature of the devil. Don't get it twisted about the relentless nature that it keeps coming. There's nothing wrong. I must be doing something wrong. Well, actually, you must be doing something right. If you ain't got no problems, then you're not an intimidation to the devil. Why do you think they kept coming over and over? Even though they was ridiculing them, even though they were saying it ain't going to ever happen, there must be a reason that you keep coming at me even though you're telling me I ain't nobody. There must be a reason you keep letting me live in your head rent free when I'm nobody. That you keep coming at me over and over and over again when I ain't did nothing to you. There must be a reason. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Say it again, hallelujah. I don't know how it's going to manifest itself. I don't know when it's going to manifest itself. I don't know where. But I matter. You matter. Your calling matters. Your ministry matters. You may not be a preacher, but you matter. Maybe to you, maybe to your children, maybe to your grandchildren. I don't know. It don't really matter. I don't have to know. Because God knows. God knows. God knows. God knows. Lift those hands up towards heaven. I need you to protect yourself. That's what the walls are. Today is be relentless. I don't care how frustrating it gets. Be relentless. Just never quit. Never give up. Never stop. I recently got a promotion that I imagine most people would have thought I never would have got. Because with man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And what he meant for evil, God will turn it around for your good to save many people. You don't know, hallelujah, you going back to that assignment, going back to that work, may be the very thing that saves somebody on that work. Hold those hands up high. Say this with me. Say, Father, I stand here as a relentless worker. I'm relentless in whatever you call me to do. Say, Lord, wherever you put my feet, I will be relentless in my home, in my family, on my job, in my business, at my church, in my ministry, in my calling, with my children. Say, today and for the rest of my life, I will work until you say, well done. Hold those hands up. Father, right now, fill us with a double portion of your anointing. Fill us with a double portion of your gifts. Fill us with a double portion of your spirit. Lord, somebody came here today ready to give up. Somebody's not here because they already gave up. But Lord, I refuse to quit. I refuse to give up. I refuse to stop. Hallelujah. I refuse because you've given me the power and the anointing to keep on fighting in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, as we lift our hands up, endow us with your power. Endow us with your spirit. Fill us right now. Let this word take root in my heart. Let me, Lord, be a born-again believer that realizes that I can work until you say time enough. Until you say well done. But all the days of my appointed time will I work till my change come till my change come I'll hold those hands up anybody needs healing in their body I want you to receive that healing right now hallelujah anybody needs deliverance for their soul receive that deliverance right now whatever you need God has already supplied it my God is not coming with help he's a present help huh? whatever you need right now just hold those hands up and say lord i receive it today i receive my help today 
I receive my anointing. I receive my gifting. I receive my deliverance. I receive my breakthrough. I'm through with this stronghold. I'm fighting this devil over and over and over and over and over and over again. If I have to fight every day of my life, I will fight. If I have to fight every day of my life, I will fight the good fight of faith in Jesus' name.